Hi guys. All right, so this is Wednesday's math lesson. It's the only video you need to watch for math this week. Um, we are going to do a couple of things. We're going to um, listen to the math message and solve the math message. Then we're going to solve a second problem. You're gonna learn about a new diagram, kind of like the change diagram. We're gonna learn about a new diagram that will help um, solve subtraction problems. We're gonna practice using that diagram. And then when we're done, we're going, you're going to complete journal page 87, and it has the same problems that we're practicing here. That's all you need to do for today. Um, we do not need a picture of a math journal 87. It's just a practice. Tomorrow there is a um, quick check-in to see how um, everybody did with this diagram and, and some practice subtraction problems. So no need to upload the picture of the journal page, but let's get started. I'm gonna share my screen. All right. So the math message, Lou saved five cents. Lisa saved eight cents. Who saved more money? How much more money? Draw a picture to show how you know. So why don't you take some time and see if you can solve this. So you can pause the video, take some time, see if you can solve this using some of the math tools that you have at home. So you could use your um, whiteboard, and your marker and your eraser. You could use your number grid or your number line. You could use um, pennies that you gathered last week. You could use anything as a counter in place of pennies. So take a second, pause the video, and see if you can solve this problem. Okay. So I am going to take it that you've paused the video and started the video again because you've taken some time to solve the problem. Let's walk through this problem together. So Lou saved five cents and Lisa saved eight cents. One way that my brain goes is to make a picture. I love to make pictures. It helps my brain organize the information. We need to figure out who saved more money? So to answer that question, one, the answer is going to be either Lou or Lisa. Who saved more money? Well, one of them did. Then we need to figure out how much more money. So this is going to be a number. All right, so I'm gonna get started on my picture. I am thinking that I'm going to organize using pennies. So I'm going to create a row of pennies for Lou, and I'm going to create a row of pennies for Lisa, and I'm using an S for Lisa, because if I did, they both start with L, so that wouldn't help me very much. Now Lou has five cents, so, oh no, how do I get back to my arrow? Hang tight. Okay, maybe that was it. All right, so here are my pennies over here. Lou saved five, I'm gonna drag five over next to my L for Lou. So that's one, two, three, four, five. All right. Now, hold on, I'm gonna pause for just a moment. All right, so let's get back to work. I had to stop because Hannah got me flowers. Okay, so Lou saved five cents. One, two, three, four, five. Lisa saved eight cents. So I'm gonna drag eight pennies over. One, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So who saved more money? Well, I could just tell by looking at the numbers, but this shows me clearly Lisa saved more money. How much more money? Okay, that one's a little bit harder. So, here is one that they both saved. Two, they both saved three cents. They both saved four cents. And they both saved five cents. But Lisa saved this coin, this coin, and that coin. She saved that much more than Lou. So let's see, how many coins, how many cents more did she save? One, two, three. She saved three more cents than Lou. This is how I could draw a picture. Now, if you are, if you don't have pennies and you want to draw a picture on your whiteboard, we can represent pennies in a drawing by drawing a little P. Ah, that looks an awful lot like a B. Let's try it again. Or a D, I guess I should say. Now I'll try and make a P. A little bit better. And then you can draw a circle around it. And that represents a penny. So if you wanted to do this with a drawing of a penny, you could do the same diagram, but instead of the coins, you would see circles with P's in them to represent a penny, okay? So here I can clearly see that Lisa saved three more cents, but this is not the only way that you could solve this problem. And I'm gonna stop sharing so that I can show you my number grid. Okay. So, here's my number grid. And if I remember correctly, Lou had saved five cents. So I'm gonna circle my five, because that's the number that I'm gonna be working with. And Lisa had saved eight cents. I'm gonna circle that number, so I remember that those two are the numbers that I'm working with. Then I need to figure out how many more cents that Lisa saved. So I know that Lou saved all of these and Lisa saved all of these. But Lisa saved one, two, three more cents than Lou. So I went from five, the number that Lou saved, to eight, the number that Lisa saved, and I found the difference between those. Okay, I'm gonna show you one more way to solve this problem, and I'm gonna take this down. I'm gonna show you a diagram, okay? This is called a quantity diagram. Quantity is another number for how much. Okay, so we have a big box with the word quantity or how many, and a small box for the quantity or how many. And in this line, we are going to find the difference between the two numbers. Okay, so our quantity quantity difference diagram. So if we remember, Lou had saved five cents. Lisa had saved eight cents. So let's fill in our diagram and see if it helps us out at all. So the way to remember how to use this is bigger box, bigger number. Okay, so looking at these two numbers, we're going to figure out what the bigger number is. Well, between five and eight, the bigger number is eight. Bigger box, bigger number. So I'm gonna put the bigger number in the bigger box. Does that make sense? Yeah. Then I'm going to put the smaller number in the smaller box. Smaller number, smaller box. Five. 
Lisa saved eight cents, the bigger number. Lou saved five cents, the smaller number. Now I have to figure out what's the difference between those two numbers. Well, I could start with eight and I could subtract the smaller number. So take the bigger number, subtract the smaller number, and that will give me the difference. Okay, so I'm going to bring out my number grid to do this again. And I'm going to start with eight and I'm going to go backwards five. I got eight. I'm going to end at five. I'm going to go backwards five. Are you ready? One, two, three, four, five. Where do I land? Three. So that means that the difference is three. I took the bigger number, I subtracted the smaller number, and I got the difference. Okay, the difference, the word difference is um, the answer to a subtraction problem. Okay, so let's do another problem. And we'll see how we do with this one. While I'm setting up my board, I would like you on your board to draw a quantity, quantity difference diagram. You don't need to put the numbers in. I would just like you to take some time to draw the diagram while I set my board up for our next problem, okay? Instead of writing the word quantity, you could just put a Q. And instead of writing the word difference, you could just put a D. Okay? Either one would work. All right. Okay, if you haven't finished your quantity quantity diagram, I want you to pause the video and finish your diagram and then continue the video. If you're done with your quantity quantity diagram, we're going to keep going. Problem two. Al has 12 cents. June has seven cents. Who has more? How much more? Okay. So, first of all, I'm going to kind of look at the important information in here. And it says, who has more? Okay. Well, I notice, if I read through it again, Al has 12 cents. June has 7 cents. Well, Al has more money. Okay, he's got 12. June has seven. Now, I could solve this in a bunch of different ways, but I'm going to try and use this quantity quantity difference diagram. So if you want a challenge, I challenge you to pause the video now and see if you can solve this. If you're feeling comfortable with your quantity quantity difference diagram, see if you can solve this problem using that. Okay, if you're feeling like Mrs. Hutchins, I don't know how to use a diagram, then just keep listening and we'll go through it together. Okay, if I'm thinking about this quantity quantity difference diagram, I remember bigger box, bigger number. Bigger box, bigger number. Okay, so I'm going to put the 12, the bigger number, in the bigger box. And then I'm going to remember smaller number. Smaller box, smaller box, smaller number. So I'm going to take that smaller number and put it in the smaller box. And now I need to figure out the difference between those two numbers. So I could come up with a number sentence 12. And I can think of it like this start with the bigger number and subtract the smaller number. So 12 minus 7 
equals something, equals the difference. We're not sure about the difference yet. You can solve this a couple of different ways. You can use your number grid for sure. Or you can draw a picture. Um, we're talking about cents here, which means we're talking about pennies. So I think I might draw a picture real quick. So I have Al and I have June. And I'm going to make P's for pennies. I'm going to move Al down a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, oh, that's a lot of P's. 12, I think I did 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Okay, now I'm gonna do seven for June. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Those are not the neatest P's I've ever made. Okay, I need to figure out how many more Al has. He has more money, how much more? Well, they both saved one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. They both saved that amount of money, but Al saved that much more. So let's see how much it is. One, two, three, four, five. Al saved five cents more. Definitely not the only way you could have solved this problem. If you had used the number grid, you could have solved it a couple of different ways. You could have started at 12 and counted back seven. You ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I landed at five. The other thing you could have done is said, well, I know that Al saved 12 cents, and I know that June saved seven cents, so I'm going to figure out the difference between those two numbers. And I could count up. I could go one, two, three, four, five. Or I could count backwards. One, two, three, four, five. So, oh, I think I did that wrong. One, two, three, four, five. That's much better. So I still got five. So who has more money? Al. How much more money? Five cents. All right, let's do one more. So leave your quantity quantity diagram and only erase the numbers if, on your board. And let's do one more problem. All right, so let's look at the next problem. All right, and I tried to use some of our friends' names so that it makes it a little bit more fun. Um, don't get too silly with it, but let's look at our next problem. Tia, Tia has three pennies. Max has 10 pennies. Who has more? How many more? Okay, so the first thing I need to do is figure out the important information. Tia has three pennies. Max has 10 pennies, okay? They wanna know who has more. Well, just from looking at that, which number is bigger, three or 10? 10. 10, who has 10? Max. So who has more? Max has more. I didn't even need to figure anything out, anything out to figure, to, Solve that question. Now, how many more? That I do have to solve. 
So I'm going to plug the information into my quantity diagram to help organize my thinking. So bigger box, bigger number. Even though Max has 10 pennies, that's the second sentence. It's the second piece of information. It's still the bigger number, so it still goes in the bigger box. So 10 goes in the bigger box. Smaller box, smaller number. Even though this was the first piece of information, it's still the smaller number, and it still goes in the smaller box. So we start with the bigger number. We subtract the smaller number. That will give us the difference. So 10, my number model is going to be 10, the bigger number, minus the smaller number equals, well, I don't know yet. I have to find out. You can do this a lot of different ways. You can solve it using your number grid. You can solve it using a picture. You could solve it using your fingers. However you want to do it, take a second, fill in your quantity diagram, write your number model, and try to solve this problem. Okay, hopefully you were able to solve it. If not, we can walk through it together. Okay, so we have Max who has 10 pennies and we have Tia who has three. So you could draw a picture to solve this problem. So I might draw a picture. I might, instead of drawing pennies, maybe I'll just draw dots. So I'll have Max with 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Took me so long to draw pennies last time, but I think this is a better use of time. And we have Tia, who's got three. One, two, three. Well, they both saved this much, or they both have that many. Max has this many cents more. So let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Max has seven cents more. So if I have 10, those 10, and I take away the three, that leaves me with seven. So you could do that, or you could use your number grid. And we would start at 10, and we would go back three to see where we land. Start at 10, and count back three. One, two, three. I land at seven, which is the same that we did here. Okay, so today for your practice, you have a journal page, and I'm just gonna screen share that real quick so you can see what and, um, you need to do, and I can kind of walk you through it. So, my computer a minute to show. Okay. So this is journal page 87, down here, 87. Um, it says, solve. Use the diagrams to help you. Then write a number model to match. So you have a quantity, quantity difference diagram for each section. So number one is all of this information, okay? Number one, John has eight pennies. Nick has two pennies. Who has more pennies? How many more? You write the number there, and then you write the number model. So remember, bigger box, bigger number, smaller box, smaller number. So where is that eight gonna go? Where is the two gonna go? Okay, who has more, John or Nick? Then you can solve the problem and you can write the number model that you were able to come up with. Bigger number minus the smaller number equals the difference. Number two, 
June has 10 pennies. Mia has six pennies. Who has fewer pennies? This is a difference. It's a tricky one. They're trying to trick you. Fewer means less. So they're not looking for who has more. They're looking for who has less. Does June have less or does Mia have less? Yeah, we would write Mia right there. And then same rules over here, bigger box, bigger number, smaller box, smaller number. So I would put 10 in the bigger box, six in the smaller box, and I would come up with the difference. How many fewer? So you're just gonna tell me the same thing. How many fewer? And you're gonna write a number model. Number three, Dante has seven pennies. Kayla has five pennies, or sorry, 15 pennies. Who has more pennies, Dante or Kayla? Same thing, bigger box, bigger number, smaller box, smaller number. How many more? What's the difference? And then your number model. Number four, for problem three, right up here, Jamal wrote seven plus blank equals 15. Explain how his number model matches the problem. That one is a little bit trickier because we didn't talk about um, addition number models versus subtraction number models. We did subtraction number models. So I'm going to have you take a guess at this. And if you can't do it or if you're not understanding it, that's fine. Um, but let me quickly show you. Let's go back to Tia and Max's problem and I can show you what a number sentence might look like for addition there. So here's Tia and Max's problem. Remember Tia had 10, or Max had 10 pennies, Tia had three pennies. We figured out that seven was the difference. Now I showed you the number model, 10 minus three equals seven. 10 minus three equals seven. But you could also solve this problem using addition. Ah. And if I were to do that, I would go something plus three equals seven or three plus something equals seven. Either way would work because of the turnaround rule, right? So I would take the smaller number and it would go first. And then I would take the bigger number and that would go at the end. I wrote seven there, it's supposed to be 10. So three plus something equals 10. Then I would solve it using those addition strategies that we practiced. I would start at three and I would end at 10 and I would count the hops in between. So let's do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that means that I started at three, I counted up seven and I ended or landed at 10. Just like your change to more diagrams. You started at three, you counted up seven, and you ended at 10. Okay, that's how you could use this diagram and an addition number sentence. It's the same as if I started with the same number sentence that I came up with here. 10 minus three equals seven okay all right hopefully that helps you answer number four but again if you have a hard time with number four you can just leave it blank um, it's not going to be on um, the check-in tomorrow i really just want to make sure that you know how to use this diagram and how to find how much more that's a really important way so using your number grid drawing a picture um, using manipulative so using pennies or counters or something like that those are all helpful ways to solve how many more
you have questions, let me know. Um, shoot me an email. We can do a quick one-on-one -on -one Zoom call if you need some more um, help with this. But feel free to let me know if you're having a hard time. Um, otherwise, I won't be doing another math video until after vacation. All right. Bye, guys.